Germany against Hungary. Uh, Des, producer Des, if you could throw up the table, this is a very good show. And once again, from a Hungary side who got the only goal in the game, thanks to Adam Zalai, the 34-year-old now, believe it or not, 34-year-old, mm -hmm. almost as old as me. And um, yeah, 20 <laughs> years younger than Nigel. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He scored against Germany at the Euros. He's yeah. uh, now scored his 26th national team goal. Uh, beautiful victory. I was watching this game and I know you guys were kind of coming back and forth between uh, the Italy England game, but also the Germany Hungary game. But this is a massive statement victory from Hungary, but also quite worrying for Germany. Mike, let's start with you. I mean, surprise result here, but we have to say well done to Hungary. They topped the group. I love this Hungarian team, and there's a lot of spillover effect from the group that got the result against Germany. You have so many players who are familiar with the German league, a lot of Bundesliga players. I look at was it Salai has Bundesliga experience. He plays for Basel now, but a proven goal scorer in big tournaments and big games. But look throughout this team. You have Sobot Salai, who plays for Leipzig. You have with Gulachi, the goalkeeper, proven winner, German Cup winner with Leipzig. Down the spine of the team, this is a team that's committed to defending. Schaefer plays for the league-leading Union Berlin. You have so many players who were young at the last Euros, and they're now coming into their own, coming into a system that fits them, where you defend, everyone defends. What was remarkable was Gulachi played outstanding. And for this Hungarian What's team, good? for this Hungarian team to be successful, their back line and their back three and their goalkeeper do have to come up with big moments, which then set up a golden opportunity for their front three. And they've been playing for the last four years, playing this three, four, almost like Christmas tree formation, three, four, two attacking midfielders and a target striker. And that interchangeability between the three, you know, your target striker is always going to be central and the German team with a, with a back four, they looked all over the place in the last couple tournaments. You've seen them shift to a back three and you could see the look of frustration on Hansi Flick's face at the end of the final whistle. It wasn't for a lack of chances that this game didn't deliver. It was just an outstanding Hungarian performance and Hungary is a team that's in form. They did the business against England, not once, but twice. And now they're doing the business against Germany, top of the group. I know it's the Nations League. And the big the big countries, the big country press people, James Benz, I'm calling you out. It's easy to say, ah, it's the Nation League. Hungary, these are the things that are setting, setting it up for the next Euros, and who knows, the next World Cup to be. Can I just add, before you it's jump in, League. James, let me just add here <laughs> that that was the first <laughs> defeat for Hansi Flick as the manager of Germany. First ever defeat, which is a crazy statistic right there. But I, I, I love the points you make about Hungary and how dangerous they are. I mean, they had, what, three Leipzig players playing in Leipzig for Hungary and uh, defeating Germany. It must be a great feeling for them. But James Bench, I mean, worrying for Germany offensively. I'm not worried about them too much defensively. I'm worried about what they're doing offensively. Struggling to score goals. Timo Werner again. I mean, just they look a little bit lost sometimes, Germany. Yeah, I, I, I mean, obviously you will have seen more more of this game than me, and but my understanding is that he played Werner kind of up front on his own with yes. with the three in behind, and I mean, you know, you don't have to have watched much football in Leipzig to know that that's not how you get the best out of Timo Werner, and that he needs someone near him. I mean, you know, Thomas Tuchel, Frank Lampard, why no one has really, and and now Hansi Flick, why no one has really tried Havertz and Werner as a true front two. I don't really know. And, and you know, I, I think across that squad, it, it worries me that there isn't that obvious answer. I like Havertz as a as a centre forward, but you have to get the players around him spot on. I think you can with the options Flick has. Um, and then, you know, if you're playing Werner, you need to play two up top. Um, mm -hmm. These are things you shouldn't be having to work out on the fly late on, you know, kind of similar to the issues that England have. Um, mm -hmm. And it would, it would worry me. But equally, I... I don't see an, an obvious solution for Flick that doesn't involve, like, you know, ripping up the rule book, ripping up the approach with with one game to go. I think sometimes life football just hands you a, a, a dud hand, and you know we can kind of trace this right back as as I think it's Rafa Honigstein in his book on on when Germany won the World Cup. Did you know the greatness that they built in this cadre of attacking midfielders that even succeeded that team from 2014? It doesn't mean they've created a lot of players that are very similar. You've got a generation of Sanes, Gnabry's, uh, Havertz's, Werner's, wide forwards, and absolutely no one to play through the middle at all. It's um, it's a bit of a headache, and I'm not the one that can fix that. Mm -hmm. Nigel, you got anything to add? I don't want to talk about the Germans. I'm going to join Mike's bandwagon <laughs> on Hungary. 
Hungary were absolutely fantastic. And like Mike said, they beat England and they beat Germany. They're making a massive statement. And Mike said everything pretty much. They're so well organized, so resilient, so difficult to beat. It's a team effort with Hungary, a real team effort. And the only thing that Mike forgot to say is the government is what needs to be getting a bit of credit for Hungary's situation right now. They heavily invested in the footballing structure in Hungary to put them where they are right now. I, ho I believe that the, the, the president is a big football fan and he puts so much money to reinvest into the footballing system or structure of Hungary. And now they're reaping the rewards. They really are making statement wins in Europe and becoming a dominant force in European football. You know, I don't want to talk about Germany and, you know, what they did, their problems and that. They've got the players. They need to find out and put the puzzle together. That's something that they can work out and do. But you've got to give credit to teams like Hungary because for me, again, they've got experience across Europe, not a tremendous amount, but for what they're doing, just getting the players to play with such commitment, desire and work rate and effort to get that win, we've got to give them a tremendous amount of credit. Yeah, they sort of done a Germany Hungary. What they've done is they've invested in youth, and these young players are now reaching uh, a point where they are transferring over to really big European clubs, top five domestic leagues, and they're playing competitive competitively week in and week out. And you're starting to see the national team benefit from that. I thought it was tremendous to see that performance. The way they were counterattacking against Germany mm -hmm. today was fantastic. Every single time Germany broke down around the top of the box. Hungary were gone. They were dangerous. They were creating. Just couldn't find that finishing touch until eventually he got that goal, obviously, off a set play, which was a great finish from Adam Zalai. But to touch upon Germany real quickly, obviously, it's interesting to see them lose a game, but I just don't see that, that killer. I don't see that punch. Mm -hmm. I am impressed with what they've got in, as a roster in general. They have tremendously talented players, similar to England in many ways. I would say this. Maybe you both disagree with me. But there are question marks about Germany, as I have question marks about England. You can recognize that they have the potential to go so far in a World Cup, could yeah. potentially make a final, but it could go horribly wrong and it could end up in disaster. So I think Germany's pretty much in the same boat as an England are when it comes to the World Cup. But I am uh, very impressed with what Hungary did uh, in that game. Very impressed with what they've done throughout the Nations League as well. Go ahead, James. Yeah, just wanted to dive in as you're t talking about how uh, how doomed you think Germany and England are. Uh, I hate to say it, but uh, the, uh, my desk tasked me with uh, predicting the World Cup. The, and this ran just before this evening's Nations League games. I might have had Germany beating England on penalties in the semis. Oh, wow. from your lips to Gareth Southgate's tactic boards. <laughs> Jesus.